All right, thank you all for joining us today for our session around unlocking hidden savings for Cisco partners. We truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to engage with Ray Allen. For over 20 years, our team has been working closely with Cisco to deliver to their partners IT asset management solutions that connect their channel, unify their sources of truth, and govern their data to drive real business outcomes. A few housekeeping items. This is a live event that is being recorded. We will be sharing the recording with each of you. If you have any questions on any of the content presented today, feel free to enter them into the chat and our team will take action to help answer them. Our speaker today, Ben Strickland. He leads our product team here at Ray Allen and Ben previously worked at Cisco for close to 20 years. He comes loaded with a deep wealth of knowledge around Cisco's tools and their partners. And I'm positive you walk away with deeper insights to help move your business forward. All right, enough for me, Ben. The floor is yours. All right, thanks, Shane. I very much appreciate it. Um, hopefully everybody can uh, see the slides as I go through here. Um, well, this, uh, this session is a little bit different than some of the ones that we've done in the past. Um, uh, we tried to focus, uh, you know, very much on really what we see, you know, kind of out there in the real world. Um, and a lot of the statistics that I'm going to talk about today are based off of, um, uh, uh, you know, real customers, real data, uh, real problems that we see out there and, and how prevalent things are, uh, you know, especially in the beginning uh, when you are, um, uh, you know, looking to find new ways to, uh, to, to bring in new revenue. Um, this is actually particularly important right now, um, as you know, everybody's kind of uh, preparing for you know, uh, you know what might be um, you know in the economy over the coming uh, months and uh, and year or so, and uh, becomes really important uh, to be able to look for things like um, you know where are the where are the holes that I'm missing right now? Where are the opportunities that I already have? How can I decrease my expenses to be able to achieve the same things? And uh, a lot of asset management uh, data can be uh, exceptionally important for being able to uh, to be able to achieve these goals. So uh, with that, uh, there are a couple of um, a couple of topics we're going to hit today. Uh, first, we're just going to go through some of the opportunities. Uh, we're going to talk about you know the potential sales plays uh, that you can use uh, this data for, whether it being, uh, you know, driving some of your existing opportunities, but it can also be, uh, like I said, on the savings side as well, as well as expansion opportunities at the same time and, and how things like the unified source of truth, um, you know, help, help with that sort of, of exercise. Uh, it wouldn't be a, a conversation for me if I didn't talk about the unified source of truth. So, uh, please, uh, accept my apologies. But from that, we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about um, uh, how we can do better, uh, you know, as as a whole for proactive renewals, technology refreshes, looking for software license opportunities uh, that you know might not have been apparent before, coverage opportunities, and of course, finally, uh, like I said, how all of this can be useful for expansion and takeovers. Uh, as uh, Shane mentioned. Uh, feel free to ask any questions along the way, and we will make sure uh, in the chat window, and we'll make sure that they get addressed as we go. So, as we start talking about this, uh, I want to think about things, you know, both from your customer's perspective, well as, as well as your perspective. And uh, these are the sorts of questions that you're going to see as we kind of, as we walk through some of these opportunities. From the client perspective, and we always have to come into it from, from their point of reference because everything else derives from that. You know, at the end of the day, this is all about making um, the, the end customer happy. And, and they have certain things that you know, they would like to help with, and uh, they want to make sure that you know, we're driving them you know, with good data tools, uh, making good decisions. And so what are some of these decisions? Some of these things you might need, you might need to understand. First off, basic things. What is it they need to buy in the first place? Generally, people tend to have a vague notion of what it is. They might use information from what they bought last time. Um, but you know, how accurate you know is that really? And um, uh, you know, how can we really dial down? Uh, uh, 
purchase decisions, you know, to be exactly what they need um, rather than just what people think that they need. Then that we, the customer needs to be able to understand and, you know, get a good feeling of, you know, if they actually can use what they buy. As mistakes happen, uh, you know, from purchases uh, and from uh, from either new renewals or maintenance or new subscriptions, as mistakes come up, and mistakes are certainly going to come up, how can you quickly ad ad and, ad and efficiently identify them and get them fixed? Um, but uh, more often than not, before the customer even knows they have the problems in the first place. Uh, but if they do have the problems, make it as, as quick and easy and efficient for them as possible. And finally, if there are others involved and they aren't doing these sorts of tasks, you know, the customer's going to want other mistakes to be um, addressed as well. And, you know, the more that you can bring to addressing customers' problems, and if you can even identify problems even outside of your, uh, outside of your window and help uh, make suggestions ahead of that, then that's what leads to um, you know everything here on 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 the bottom. Uh, by understanding what the customer needs to buy, then you can really dial in exactly what to sell. If you understand um, that, you know what exactly the customer is using, then you can really dial in ensuring that the customer is getting the optimum value from everything that you are selling, um, rather than um, uh, you know figuring it out you know, at, at the end of the process or never really being sure. Um, if you can fix mistakes, then you ensure that the customer has a good experience and that uh, you become that trusted go-to for any, you know, dealing with any sort of issues um, and, and, and basically making yourself indispensable. And if you can fix others' problems, then you become who the customer goes to um, first when they're trying to solve something that where they're not getting satisfaction elsewhere. So with that, we're going to introduce uh, you know, a set of um, a set of topics, and uh, uh, the way that you know we think about this as Ray Allen is you know these are the types of um, of conversations uh, that we feel that every partner should be having with their customer, right? To be able to driving to be able to drive this sort of efficiency and looking for these new opportunities. Uh, that I was talking about earlier. We're going to break them up into a couple of different categories. We're going to go through each category one at a time. We're going to talk about proactive renewals, making renewals as cheap as possible uh, for you to actually be able to do while at the same time being as accurate as possible uh, and uh, making sure that they're always happening. And we're not getting into situations where um, uh, where they're not happening and then you miss it and then you never go back and catch it later. We've actually uh, seen this happen uh, you know, time and time again, you know, in the out in the world where, uh, you know, account team doesn't, you know, get the renewal for whatever reason. Maybe somebody was on vacation. Maybe they were you know, in between teams at the time. The renewal is missed. And, and then forevermore, that renewal, it becomes difficult to get for that, that customer because it slips away from uh, our, you, your ability to kind of go back and recapture it. We'll talk about that a bit. We'll talk about being uh, on the forefront of technology refreshes. And that doesn't just mean, uh, you know, moving from one generation of hardware to the next or dealing with, with end of life. It also means, you know, moving to uh, new uh, new product types, right? Being able to move, for example, talking about Cisco, uh, then it means uh, where are our opportunities and where are our pivot points um, to be able to move from, you know, traditional a la carte models to uh, opportunities that might be more contractual, like an enterprise agreement. We'll talk about software license opportunities and look at things like software license over consumption. Um, almost everybody has customers with these problems and almost nobody is, is taking these as opportunities to go out and go sell these, uh, these opportunities to customers already. Uh, there's, there's no easier sell than something that the customer has already committed themselves to. Um, and, uh, and the data is all there for the taking, and it's just a matter of knowing where to look, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and then I, I introduced EAs a second ago as well, too, and you know, being able to you know, look at those EAs, 
getting these things right sized, making sure that we're pulling in all the possible things that really do make sense uh, to move into one of these agreements and making life easier both for you and the customer and uh, how we can uh, how that data uh, can can help you get there. Coverage opportunities um, also relates back to enterprise agreements, but also looking for all kinds of no, uh, pitfalls that exist out there. And then finally, uh, being able to use this to, um, to, to make yourself that, that go to uh, for the customer at the end of the day. Now, um, like I said, if you've ever heard one of my conversations before, you've probably heard me talk about this. So um, let me just Hopefully, I won't spend too long on this, but uh, just more than a minute or two. I do just want to kind of you know, bring up the, the importance of that single source of truth uh, and 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 why why it may be a little bit of a misnomer and why we have to think of things a little more broadly. Everybody has what they consider to be a single source of truth, right? If you're pulling information from your customer, if you're using your own data, if you're pulling information directly from the OEM, like for example, Cisco, there's always gonna be an argument about it because your single source of truth is not the same as the customer's single source of truth. And as long as that's the case, then you both have two different opinions. They're both perfectly good opinions about you know, what the truth is about all the stuff that I just talked about. Um, but there's always gonna be this argument um, about who's right about something and which, where, where we should take things from. And so, um, you know, again, uh, you know, the philosophy that you'll, you'll hear me talking about, you know, every time we, we, we talk about one of these things is that it's really not about, um, you know, just creating another single source of truth. It's not about, you know, just taking your data and saying, here's, here's what I know is best for you. It's really about, you know, as you're building these practices, uh, about getting in that practice of taking the customer data, about taking the vendor data, about taking your data, and 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 using the best of breed for each of 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 your data elements. Um, if if the conversation is about uh, location, about where things are actually deployed, well, your customer probably knows it better than either you or um, or the OEM does or about whether something's in service or not and whether it should actually be activated or, or um, you know, if licenses are deployed or not. These are all things where, where the customer data is, is vastly important. Um, if it's something about contracts and what uh, is actually on or off contract, you know, you or, um, or the customer can think anything you want to about it, but if the holder of the contract uh, doesn't agree with you, um, then you're going to have problems with it. And so therefore, you know, you've got to make sure that, you know, all these things, you know, get, get brought together. And so um, I just wanted to kind of have that in the back of your mind, because all of this, you know, ends up uh, playing, uh, playing together about being able to use this asset management data, but only once it's been unified to be able to drive these sorts of conversations. So let's start with proactive renewals and a little bit of a story here um, about you know kind of what we've seen you know happen with um, uh, uh, with with entities and organizations that have uh, made a big push towards um, uh, using asset management data to drive their renewal opportunities. Uh, this this is actually a, a real world scenario uh, that's uh, that's over here on the right hand side. Um, you know, this just happened to be something that we were um, uh, involved in, but it's it's really more about the practice rather than anything else. Um, so uh, you know, essentially, um, we we had a, um, a, a situation where we got brought in to help a um, an organization, and they had about fifty percent uh, 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 renewal rates on uh, on each of their. Uh, each of the renewals that are going through. And just like I was telling you about before, and then once that renewal got missed, it just completely went away and they never had a chance to go back and even recapture that renewal, you know, even next renewal period, it just disappeared forever. Um, and so uh, kind of corresponding with that, they had very a little understanding of their, uh, of the actual assets that their customers were using at the same time. So the green line represents their renewal rate. The red line represents uh, the percentage of assets outside the scope of their, um, uh, uh, of their asset management program. So the things that they didn't know about. 
Um, and so uh, when uh, basically as soon as uh, they they begin using all of this asset data uh, and they, they begin bringing this information in, their renewal rate jumped from uh, 50% to 74%, okay? And from 74% quarter over quarter, uh, it, it, it approached uh, renewal rates um, uh, closing in on 93 to 94%. Um, and, 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 and really the only thing that changed at this, uh, at this point was um, the, uh, uh, the bringing together of this asset management data. Um, uh, they, they fed this directly into their uh, resale teams at this point. Um, they weren't basically sending their gatherers out to you know, just ask the question, hey, what do you need to renew this time based off of the last renewal? Uh, it was based off of the asset data each and every time. Um, and uh, that way, if something were missed, you know, it immediately got rectified at the, at the, the nearest possible opportunity. Um, and uh, they were far more accurate in uh, actually getting those renewals out there. And oh, by the way, it was actually a lot, uh, a lot more cost efficient for them to actually do this at the same time as well. So, so basically, what this does is that it uh, essentially brings you away of uh, being able to automate full service quoting and selling um, in a way that um, you know would feel like Excel magic before, right? As you know, once you start bringing in um, you know this data. Uh, and then once you uh, begin capturing and maintaining that data, um, then it allows you to kind of keep this quote integrity, right? From quarter to quarter, you know exactly what to expect. You are closing more of your renewals in the quarter that they're supposed to, and you're not slipping to the right uh, because you're having these discussions back and forth between you and the customer. And uh, Anyway, it's something that we've we've definitely seen um, uh, you know real results in in the real world. Moving on to technology refreshes, and one of the things that I'm going to be bringing up as we go through the discussion today are, you know, really you know again these real statistics of of what we see you know happening, um, uh, you know, in real customers. This is uh, this is data uh, summarized across uh, thousands of customers. Uh, uh, across the world, um, uh, it's actually multi uh, multi vendor as well. Large majority of this is Cisco, but we're also looking at other vendor uh, information as well too. And and we learn a lot of uh, of, of things about um, you know what's what's really going on in the world. For example, um, uh, on average, uh, in, in, in any given customer, about fourteen and a half percent of all assets are actually already in the support within that customer. And if we just extend that out just a little bit further, um, uh, almost 19% will be end of support within this year. That's that's almost 20% of, um, of, of your install base uh, that becomes uh, at least in the um, in the uh, in the discussion about renewals, about being able to get them to new products, about being able to move them to things like enterprise agreements or move them away from traditional products to, uh, for example, an SD-WAN solution. Um, and uh, really, um, uh, you know, being able to see this and kind of what it looks like, uh, you know, year after year, uh, you know, it, it's, um, uh, it's, it's actually, you know, very impactful. And if, if we even expand this out further, if you kind of look at uh, the, uh, the chart we have on the bottom right-hand uh, corner, you'll actually see, um, you know, there, there, this actually tends to be lumpy, right? Each year is not, you know, exactly the same. And there's going to be a couple of years coming up where the opportunities are higher than for others. 2025 and 2027, I'm just going to point out uh, both in particular, are, um, uh, you know, just because of the way that products have been rolled out and the way that uh, life cycles um, uh, are, are, are playing out in the real world, those become actually really interesting years um, for, uh, for really focusing hard on, on technology refreshes, as I was saying, kind of moving customers on to, to that next generation. Uh, but again, you don't know this until you put, you know, a full uh, asset management program in place to be able to uh, 
uh, to understand you know, what that lumpy world looks like um, over the next coming years. Um, if we then turn our attention to software licenses, um, this is actually probably the thing I end up talking about the most with the most amount of people. And uh, there's an immense amount of opportunity too. Um, both from an overconsumption as an underconsumption perspective. I want to focus your attention actually on uh, the, 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 the probably the, the middle uh, statistic as well as the uh, right hand uh, most statistic. 72.7% of all customers, and this, this one's actually Cisco specific, are overconsuming licenses and they probably don't even know about it. Okay, so they are using licenses. They probably need to purchase those licenses um, and uh, uh, and nobody's going out and having that conversation with them that says, all right, here are a list of the licenses that you have. Um, here's our list of what you're over consuming. Cisco smart account provides you this data. They, they literally give you a roadmap for being able to, to have these conversations with the customer. And they're expecting us all to go out there and do it, right? But we, the, the apple is right there. All we have to do is just reach out there and take it. Um, I was actually having a conversation uh, with, uh, uh, with somebody yesterday, and I was able to show them uh, with them, you know, just, a, just by looking at a couple of data points um, of their software utilization, where they had bought, uh, I believe it was 40,000 um, uh, collaboration uh, voice licenses. They actually needed 60,000. We can very see e very quickly and easily in the data that they needed 60,000. That's actually an increase of, you know, of course, 50% right off of the bat of just sales that we um, uh, needed to get in front of the customer to, uh, to deal with, that, uh, with that, that growth that the customer had unexpectedly had. Um, to be able to um, uh, to go in and recognize that revenue. Speaking of recognizing the revenue, uh, about 75% of the customers that uh, we have looked at or worked with have true forward events that are upcoming on their EAs. Now, this has mostly been uh, EA 1.0s and 2.0s. Um, we actually expect that number to actually increase on a six month recurring basis uh, going forward as Cisco uh, evolved into the EA 3.0s. Um, uh, in many cases, the EA 3.0 is actually um, a, uh, 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 is a very good thing because it, it simplifies a lot of these tasks that have been happening on a, um, an ad hoc basis before, you know, as things were, were moving around on contracts, as subscriptions were starting and stopping, a lot of these things are now getting consolidated into these very large contracts. Um, but there is always a resell opportunity coming up, uh, or sorry, yeah, with, with, with each of these events. And the more proactive you can be with customers um, about you know, expecting this and understanding it and being able to articulate Hey, remember all those a la carte conversations we were having every six weeks on things we needed to do and new purchase orders we need to bring? Well, now it's only only coming every six months. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that's going to be uh, ahead of time uh, for that six months, you know, as we kind of approach it, you know, we're going to get more and more accurate, right? As you actually, you know, work in the real world. And, um, uh, and so that becomes an opportunity then as well, too. So, Again, the opportunity here is focus on that overconsumption. Find those unknown needs that the customer hasn't even identified for them for themselves yet and has never even brought to you because they never even knew they needed it. You bring it back to them. You show them what that overconsumption was. Um, and then that becomes an immediate sales opportunity while at the same time decreasing your overall um, operational costs. Uh, for being able to collect this information, uh, I mean, it's 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 literally win-win here. And as I was uh, mentioning before, it becomes an opportunity for EAs as well as also finding those manage those um, shadow IT costs and you know getting that in front of the customer as well too. What you do to actually be able to accomplish all of this is, um, is you do need to work with your customer to get access to the OEM data on on how they're actually consuming these, these softwares and subscriptions. 
You use that then to validate their activations and bring that information back to the customer. Um, uh, obviously, the customer is not going to want to put themselves into audit risk situations, and um, this is a way for you to you know, lower that risk while at the same time uh, finding those revenue opportunities. And um, at the same time, you can help them optimize their software spend uh, as well. Again, as we're kind of kind of approaching this time frame of maybe a little bit more zero sum, you want to be that partner. You want to be that reseller who is giving them uh, visibility on here's what they actually need. I'm not going to oversell you on it. I'm going to sell you on exactly what you need, and it's going to be based off the data. And we can validate these with, through software activations uh, as we go along. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, you know, build a, uh, a documented uh, moves, ads, change, and delete uh, process uh, for the customer. It's not really rocket science. Um, it, all it takes is just kind of getting your head wrapped around it and you know, being able to articulate uh, to the customers what exactly it is they need to do. You're probably already doing a lot of this <coughs> for your own internal utilization as well. <coughs> or if you've got a managed services uh, uh, division as well. Uh, and it's about taking a lot of those learnings um, uh, productizing that and getting it back in front of your customers as well, because, you know, again, it's not that it's hard. It's not that it's difficult. It just needs to be thought through. And once you have a plan, it's easy to stick to a plan. Uh, moving on to coverage opportunities. Uh, there is lots of opportunity here for, um, uh, for, for additional uh, uh, revenue. Uh, by just mining this data. Uh, so just a couple kind of interesting points here that you might uh, find interesting. Uh, about 7% of all assets that are in customer service end up with gaps in service coverage because of uh, one of those, uh, back to that initial issue I was telling you about, about uh, you know, being able to uh, you know, quickly and efficiently you know, deal with renewals. Um, but even outside the things that just, you know, end up with coverage gaps, um, we also find that about 15% of assets are the customer intends to cover, but due to a variety of different reasons and, you know, how, um, how quotes happen in the first place and just, just misses, uh, you know, through that, um, uh, through that initial process, about 15% of assets are intended to be covered but never end up getting covered. And nobody finds out about it until, um, until the customer has a problem with it, right? And then it becomes a diving catch um, and then it has to be resolved. Uh, but at the same time, that becomes, uh, uh, that becomes an opportunity to make the customer whole on what they actually need here. Um, the last uh, one on the right is really more about fixing that data, right? And fixing customer problems. We also find that in you know uh, new environments where where this sort of data uh, isn't being proactively managed, about 14% of all assets end up getting coverage in the wrong in the wrong location. Right, so you end up with similar situations as I was just describing before, but now the customers paid for it, uh, and so so again this also becomes an opportunity. And um, it can become an opportunity both for things that you manage as well as, as things that you don't manage, um, uh, given uh, proper access into the data. Uh, there also become opportunities to save customers money as well, too. Uh, we also find that about 1.5% of assets end up being double covered. Um, so they're covered, covered across multiple contracts. Um, which becomes, you know, money that we can easily get back to the customer and uh, another uh, percent and a half also res uh, results from customers accidentally covering things they don't mean to cover in the first place. Um, so they put a strategy in place that's um, uh, that they don't want to cover something because they're self sparing, but they'll somehow end up getting it on a maintenance contract anyway. And so by identifying things like that. You know, again, you're you're working with that customer. Uh, you're making sure that everything ends up getting right size for what they need, and be, you become more valuable to them. And so, um, again, we've uh, we've talked about kind of the opportunities here, uh, but um, 
but, uh, but what we end up doing is by pulling in uh, this contract data, by having that, that full information, by comparing it against what you're selling to the customer, um, and then you can you know, look for these sorts of problems, identify them, and get them in front of the customer before they bring the issue to you, um, and uh, and uh, it makes sure that customer satisfaction stays high while at the same time, again, being a um, uh, a, a a revenue opportunity. Uh, finally, we'll kind of get into the expansion and uh, and and takeover element to all of this. And so what we want to do is um, we want to be able to use this as, as a single pane of glass to bring you know everything into a single view, right? So again, you're not operating as a um, as a single source of truth. Um, you want to be this unified source of truth. Um, but if you can bring it all together, even the stuff that you don't sell with the customer, then the questions start coming up. I'm also buying these other things. Could you manage that for me as well too? Hey, I've just got this new subscription over here. Uh, you know, with the with the new vendor. You're not even a vendor that that um, uh, that that you even sell. But you know, if you can you know help me you know keep track of this, then you know uh, then um, you know it, it's it becomes a new ser managed service that you can sell to the customer. While at the same time. You know, as you start getting this information, you start getting, um, you know, this, these additional, you know, renewal opportunities in front of you, then it becomes something that you can, uh, you know, start uh, reselling to the customer. Um, once you kind of prove that you are trustworthy with their data and that um, uh, that you're looking out for their best interest, where maybe others may not be uh, for that customer, then you're going to get those opportunities that are going to uh, to start coming up for you. Um, uh, you know, customers realize this as well, by the way, and they also understand that, you know, they're, they're the strategy that they're playing, but this becomes one of those killer opportunities to get past that, that customer reticence, um, to be able to providing you with more data. Um, you know, once you start solving their problems, um, then they're going to want to give you that data, even if it does start giving you advantages that you um, that they previously had tried to um, you know protect from you. So, uh, in conclusion, here, um, uh, everything here has really been talking about a couple of different areas and how we use asset management data to uh, uh, to drive the customer conversation. The first one is make sure that you're sizing things right. And that only comes from understanding both what customers are buying as well as what they are using, so that you sell them what they don't know that they need yet, and there tends to be lots of these opportunities that are already there, while at the same time you're not selling them things that they don't need. Okay, you're 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 helping them actually achieve their their fundamental goals um, in ways that they didn't even know that they even had problems. And that you're always looking into the future. You're using this information to be able to predict uh, quarter over quarter, year over year, where those lumpy opportunities are going to expose themselves to you. And so, um, uh, uh, by 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 building these sorts of of practices into your fundamental uh, resell practices, this is where that comes from. While at the same time driving down costs because you know you're not having conversations and trading spreadsheets back and forth and things along those lines. If you do this ahead of time, then the um, and the actual conversations become uh, far simpler and uh, and and more pleasant experiences for all involved. Which goes to the continued communications. Uh, you are you want to be giving them data all along the way. So they're continually evaluating their own practices, evaluating their own purchases, evaluating what's working and what's not working rather than things being a surprise later. You want everything to be proactive and nothing to be a reactive catch if you can ever help it in these sorts of situations. And by keeping track of this asset data, that's how you do that. And then finally, you prove your value. You prove your value initially by uh, by by right sizing them. You prove your value over time by being able to make adjustments. 
uh, by being able to look at, you know, here was your plan. Your plan was you were going to you were going to roll these things out and you were going to have this utilization at these particular periods of time. What we see is, is that here's what you've actually done. We need to raise our forecast here. We need to lower our forecast here. Um, but you have to continually be making adjustments along the way. And it's not just something that you look up, you know, you know, you know when the when the renewals actually happen. So. Anyway, I hope this was um, this was uh, useful. This was uh, again a relatively short webinar, just kind of going through again where some of those opportunities are, and maybe hopefully planting some seeds of where you might want to focus uh, your uh, your revenue goals um, over the course of the next uh, uh, next quarter or next year or so about where you might want to focus on on uh, going after some of these opportunities. We will be sending this. Um, this session out. Uh, so if you want to review anything, and as always, if you ever want to talk to me about any of these um, uh, these opportunities or any of these goals uh, along the way, I'm happy to um, you know get into a discussion with you about um, about uh, where we can potentially help you improve your own practices. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for your time, and I hope everybody has a wonderful uh, uh, Wednesday and a wonderful upcoming Memorial Day holiday.